Good morning, everyone. I'm back. I'm a little sick, actually. Spring weather's got me kind of, I don't know, low on energy in the mornings. But anyways, yesterday night I watched Annihilation on Netflix starring Natalie Portman and some other woman who I can't remember the names of. But it was a surprisingly good movie with certain tropes, but I just wanted to talk about that. So, as you know, in this channel there are no warnings for spoilers and BAM! There are spoilers. In the story, a strange dimension appears around the lighthouse and spreads around a kind of uh, beach that exactly women would like to go to ponder their mistakes in life or something. So anyways, this dimension appears and Natalie Portman, who was a soldier, and also a Harvard biologist and uh, a medical practitioner, I guess, I don't know. But if you watch the movie, if you were ever in one of her classes, you would want to change this class from the first lesson on onwards, because you see her character reveal, reveal scene in a class where she's kind of talking like cells, the wiring, life, creating, what's this, it's a tumor, and uh, all the students are around her like, what am I gonna do this semester, you know, so anyways, there's this mysterious phenomena, and Natalie Portman's husband, who's a marine, goes to explore it, I guess, but then he disappears, he's almost taken for dead when he inexplicably returns and then some stuff happens which makes Natalie Portman realize that he was away on a secret mission to another dimension to this strange uki, uki, uki dimension that has been spreading you know so off she goes with another group of women with a woman only expedition for reasons that are never revealed to us perhaps they wanted to uh, offset the balance for man's dominance in the armed forces in earlier centuries and decades i don't know so she goes off with four other women to explore this dimension and they all have these like tactical looking rifles and they're kind of walking around it's actually a good movie. I honestly expect it to be a lot worse and a lot cringier. But no, the movie is really good. So they encounter these strange plants where, I guess, a topiary arrangement person. Topiary arrangement means flower arrangement. Had the times of their lives in this movie because they encounter all these weird plants where different flowers grow from the same stem and they see these hybrid creatures they see this giant albino alligator with a throat that looks like a shark and they see these weird lizard eel type fish but everything is kind of spliced together and weird and it's kind of dreamy in a way that's convincing in a way I hadn't seen since David Cronenberg's spectacular films like Naked Lunch or Existence and if you don't know about these films just google them and watch them Naked Lunch by David Cronenberg and also Existence that's E X I Z T E N Z again by David Cronenberg if you watched Annihilation you would see a similar dreamy alternative dimension in David Cronenberg's films so anyways they encounter these things and then they see a camp that had been used by the previous group of man soldiers who were sent in and 
Of course, one of these man soldiers was Natalie Portman's Lazarus ex-boyfriend. So he kind of like, uh, they see this. Okay, this is one of the stupid things about these last generation of weird things happening Netflix films. I'm looking at this film and Stranger Things as a whole, okay? Characters always say these things to cue the audience. So they go to this base that has been abandoned and they discover this message in a uh, kind of... SD card so the soldiers shot a scary video and left it for whoever was to follow them in order to warn them I guess so but this is what happens so they go on this table there's a bag oh looks like someone left something behind oh yes it's a memory card I have a camera Let's play the memory card inside the camera. Yes. And I'm only slightly exaggerating. Like, there's no need for this kind of exposition in this day and age. Everyone knows what a memory card looks like. And they could have solved this without looking a whole lot less like idiots. But anyways, also another pet peeve I have in this Netflix generation of films which is limited not only to Netflix, but some other newfangled movies too. There's always this kind of tendency for the stage decorators to flaunt themselves, you know? I mean, they discover this weird corpse that has been turned into a sort of fungus plant-like weird growth, you know? And, I mean, even the way it's shot... It's dead in the center of the frame. It's like very well lit. Everything is visible. And they want you to say, Hey, don't you want to see how hard we work to make this scene? Now get shocked. I mean, ah, come on. I had, I saw this thing once more before. And it was in a completely different film. It was in uh, that really god-awful Suicide Squad movie. Where for no reason you see Jared, Le J Jared Leto's joker making his devious plans or something and he's like eh, 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 laughing his goddamn anemic laugh and he's like lying on the ground surrounded by like 100 knives and 50 iphones and 20 ipads and why i mean it's for no other reason for us to think that wow joker's a real psycho or for us to say that wow this planet is this dimension is like really weird but it's this kind of uh, arrogant exposition of the stage decoration also this other film which which i hated so bad that i don't even want to name it but it's another netflix film blight or bright or bite or something you know the one with modern day orcs and elves and uh, <laughs> it's a gritty urban world and will smith is in it so again in this film they go to this orc lair or whatever but everybody is super art directed you know they're orcs tattooed but also they're wearing like urban uh, football get-go and they're like all gangy and they're having this stupid ritual or something and in the middle of the set there's this big edifice with all these candles and chains or whatever you know and it's like the netflix guys are like hey audience admire this cool edgy set we built for you isn't this set really edgy isn't this world building really in your face I mean, it's just, they think they can get it over people's heads. Well, people see crap and people know crap when they see it. So, but once again, the point of this podcast is not to bash on Annihilation. I think it was a good movie, except for this flows. And another flow I will just uh, have to tell is Natalie Portman's serious acting in which like she talks about this stuff okay 
She talks about the serious stuff. But by the way, I don't want you to get the impression that I'm just hating on Natalie Portman. I mean, actually, she's a really good actress, serious actress. But when she speaks these like edgy, serious scenes, it's extremely uh, unbecoming of her. I mean, she sees all these weird creatures in the forest and it's like sometimes we saw hallucinations, doubles, entities and uh, it's I was just almost expecting her to say something like I will not negotiate a treaty when my people are dying senator that's a line from her Queen Amidala character in Star Wars Episode 1. So yeah, aside from these several things, the story is actually really interesting. So this dimension is some place where everything is scrambling together, including animals and humans' DNA, and that's why there are these hybrids. So there are these plants with kind of human topiary pieces almost, and uh, one woman turns into a plant later on. And then there's this really cool monster that's a bit like a bear. But as it attacks people, it screams in the voice of this other woman she killed earlier. And it's, I think, a really unique and fresh take on monsters. I mean, for the first time, we don't have a monster that's screaming and attacking everyone on first sight. It actually spent some of its screen time just wandering around and sniffing around and only later does it begin to bite people. And also when it's kind of instead of this stupid roar that movie monsters make, it has this really scary woman's voice, which is like, help me, help me. But phew, you will have to watch it to see. But. Later, it turns out that despite all of these other interdimensional events and this gene scrambling and all that, this movie is actually not about another dimension or even science fiction. I would dare say that Annihilation is a, a very well-made psychological movie about the effects of cheating on a woman's mind. So... It is kind of hinted throughout the story and all the characters are women that they speak about this. Why don't you, you know you have these things sometimes where you spoil a really good marriage, whatever. And then in flashbacks between the scenes, this is actually shown to us that before her husband went to this dangerous mission to this other dimension, Natalie Portman was actually cheating on her. So in a way, this biological an anomaly of a world was uh, presaged by a behavioral transgression. And Natalie Portman sleeps around with a black university professor. And there's kind of an awkward plot point there. So this whole world of unlikely mixing or unholy hybrids is a great symbol for uh, Natalie Portman's but ultimately a woman's confused self-confused mindset according to the film okay so all the animals are mixed together and they're monsters and the event of infidelity that leads to this world I mean, the act takes between a, a white woman and a black guy. So it's, so what are we supposed to gain? Like, is it not just adultery, but it's almost in the movie's internally constructed logic. It's almost like a mixing of the races. That's really awkward, I think. Uh some people could get really wrong messages from there. So anyways, what happens in the end of Annihilation is that Natalie Portman goes and confronts the source of all this confusion, which is a 
a really well done human shaped plastic looking monster that makes dubstep noises but I'm sounding funny but if you go and watch the scene it's actually really interesting and the final quarter of the film really keeps you glued to the screen I think it's a really unique way to tell off and end the story and I have to congratulate whoever directed this film for being really brave I mean there's no there's no like uh, I release you or something like it's just very primal acting and gestures so she f confronts this final demon inside her and the anomaly is destroyed and then she is reunited with her boyfriend but it's that none of them are the same again so the story here as i told before is not about another dimension at all it's about well an act of infidelity the whole world is thrown into confusion, chaos and disarray and at the end Natalie Portman defeats her own demons, reunites with her boyfriend but they are no longer the same people who started this journey but somehow life we hope goes on. So yeah a really interesting really interesting film. It's about human psychology and dare I say women's psychology. So it's really unique in that respect. It's also really unique for not really messing this up with stupid references because there were so many points at which this film could have messed up so badly and it could have ended up like, uh, you know, another, what was that really awful planty M. Night Shyamalan movie? The happening, the whatever, it, that stupid movie where plants make a gas that make people commit suicide. It could have ended up like that, but instead it ended up a really nice psychological exp expedition. Just don't watch it for world building cues because you won't find any. Instead, you would find one of the most creative uses of film-based symbolism in the early 20th century. And I think in the future we will see a lot more films like this. And there are actually some films like Annihilation. For example, if you watched Neon Demon, it's about supermodels in Hollywood and their incredibly wild competitive lifestyle. But actually... The director, I believe it's Denis Villeneuve, the same director who did the masterful job at Blade Runner 2049. So the director really did a great job there and turned again this human psychodrama into this otherworldly horror story in a way no one expected. So yeah, if you liked Annihilation, I think you would also like Neon Demon and you would probably like all of David Cronenberg's films. Go watch them all and have a nice day. Goodbye.